It's Pride Month. Name one piece of media where you could change the gender or orientation of exactly one fictional character and the plot would make more sense? I'll start. In the Gershwin Jukebox musical, Crazy For You, one needs to gender swap Polly, the lead female, to Polly. This musical has the dumbest plot. I love it so much. You can read a synopsis or you can hear my interpretation where the lead female is actually a gay man. Post overture, you can't watch five minutes of this show without thinking, oh, that's a gay character. It's New York in the 1930s. Enter theater boy Bobby. He's 32, 10 years out of college. No, he don't live on No Avenue Q. Uh, no one talks like newsies in this show, I'm sorry. Bobby sings, I'm crazy for you. At Bella Zangler, who's supposed to be like the Bob Fosse type. Not that anyone is asking, but I feel like Zangler is incredibly queer coded. Anyway, Bobby sings a love song at this man. Zangler hates Bobby, even though Bobby is very clearly talented. All the Folly girls love Bobby. Why? He's not a threat. He's the man that you'd pick over the bear. His head is empty. It's just dancing in there. This point is further emphasized when his fiance enters. Irene, more like irate. Irene says, it's time you gave up all this dancing nonsense and settled down. We've been engaged for five years. When are we getting married? Bobby's response is, we're not. The dancing nonsense, I think is a metaphor for being gay. Bobby dissociates from reality when his mother and Irene argue about which of them is more important to him, and neither is. Bobby complies with his mother's demands and goes to an old mining town called Fandolin. I'm just kidding. It's called Dead Rock. It's in Nevada. He has been tasked to foreclose on a property the bank owns. Um, yeah, Bobby's a trust fund kid, by the way. He works at the bank and spends all his free time loving only one woman. Lady Theater. Meanwhile, welcome to Dead Rock, Nevada. Polly, the man, not Polly the woman, gets a letter from the bank which says, they gonna send a man named Bobby to take daddy's theater. Polly says, he'll harm Bobby if any tries to take the theater. Bobby shows up and collapses in the street due to heat stroke and dehydration. He is dramatic AF. Obnoxious and unlikable Lank tries to buy the foreclosed theater. Lank insults Polly's dad and Polly starts yelling at Lank. Bobby hears Polly's angry voice and gets heart eyes. Lank complains that he's asked Polly to marry him 15 times. In the original context of the show, Polly the woman is the only woman around for 50 miles. So there's no one else that Lank could marry. But in the gender swapped version, Polly could be the only openly gay man within 50 miles. While the state of Nevada has only recognized same-sex marriage since 2014, I happen to know my queer cowboy history. The Wild West. <laughs> Wasn't made up of straight white men. This is the hill I will die on. First of all, most cowboys were not white. Many probably weren't straight. It's likely that several weren't cis either. So in this musical set in the 1930s, the characters all say town was thriving 50 years prior. The Wild West era lasted from post-Civil War 1865 to about 1890. In the context of historical fiction, the town of Dead Rock could have been a gay cowboy town. Back to the story, Polly picks up Bobby off the ground and helps him walk around, like trying to shake off the heat stroke, get him back on his feet. Bobby passionately kisses Polly, which is honestly pretty toxic. In the original story, the instant attraction to Polly, the woman, doesn't track. Bobby had so many of the Folly girls to choose from, why did he pick the one woman who doesn't like dancing? Uh, but in my version, it still doesn't track. Because consent is key. Over the course of a highly choreographed dance, we see Polly start to fall for Bobby. Polly actually has fun with dancing. <gasps> the two dance until they end up in the theater. Bobby falls in love with the theater, perhaps with even more intensity than he fell for Polly. Bobby 
the ultimate himbo, says they should save the theater from foreclosure. How? By doing the thing that happens in almost every dumb musical. By putting on a show and selling out all performances. Seeing as all the Zangler Follies are on vacation and apparently have unlimited money, Bobby says he'll call them to be in the show. Polly gets stars in his eyes because he's heard of Zangler. In my version, I think it's because Zangler is queer coded. Bobby lies and says he is a close friend of Zangler. This could not possibly go wrong. At this point, Bobby and Polly decide to formally introduce themselves. Oops. Polly knows Bobby is from the bank, so now Polly hates Bobby. Being such a Zangler fanboy, Bobby decides to cast Disguise Self and become Mr. Zangler. Polly becomes a simp for fake Zangler, who's just Bobby. The Follies arrive in Dead Rock and the local boys go mad because women! The local men can't dance. Bobby as Zangler teaches Moose how to play a stand-up bass. And Bobby teaches the men how to dance. It's a highly choreographed miracle, which makes Polly crush on fake Zangler even more. Irene, the irate, arrives to town and rolls a nat 20 perception check. She calls out Bobby for his disguise and for having heart eyes for someone else. How dare he? Irene attempts vicious mockery on Polly, but it fails. Polly insults Irene's old age and Irene insults Polly's young age saying he never had a coming out party. Literally, that is a line of dialogue in the show. Lank threatens Bobby, saying he's got to stay away from Polly. Lank shows Bobby an unsigned marriage license, and he says, have I made my intentions clear enough? Bobby says he doesn't want to marry Lank. Cue audience laughter. There's a whole bit about Lank being an idiot and Bobby responding by insults the same way Zangler insulted him back in New York. Bobby has clearly mastered the art of impersonating Zangler. Not that we're going to see this linger on for 15 minutes later in the show. Polly hits on fake Zangler through song. Bobby denies the advances because he doesn't want to be loved as Zangler, only as Bobby. But you can tell he's like really, really conflicted about this. Later on, Bobby, undisguised, argues with Polly regarding why Zangler is all wrong for him. Meanwhile, Irene checks in at Lank's hotel. Lank and Irene are the epitome of enemies to lovers. It's not a slow burn romance. Um, also, Lank is bi. You can't change my mind. Two new people roll in. British tourists. They're basically Yelp reviewers here to rate Lank's Hotel. Everyone's hopes are crushed when not a single ticket is sold for the show. Bobby, as Zangler, admits defeat. The show flopped and it was entirely his fault. Polly displays unrealistic optimism in stark contrast to his angry attitude when Bobby first saw him. Polly sings, I Got Rhythm, one of my favorite Gershwin tunes. The whole town joins in and gives me unrealistic expectations that people are always down to sing, dance, and make instruments out of everyday objects. Plot twist, the real Zangler shows up and collapses in the middle of the street. The same way Bobby did. Oh, how the turntables. Bobby tries to reconcile by asking Polly to marry him. I mean, that's what straight people did in the 1930s. They wanted to bang, so they got married. Again, Nevada only recently recognized same-sex marriage. Shh, just roll with it. For the first time in the whole show, Polly doesn't argue with Bobby. However, Polly does decline the offer for marriage because he has feelings for Zangler. Bobby attempts to tell the truth. Good job, but also bad job because Polly thinks Bobby is lying. The real Zangler walks in and Polly absolutely destroys Bobby by kissing Zangler. Again, we don't condone a lack of consent in this house. This just proves to me that Bobby and Polly are both dramatic AF, which makes for such a messy story. I love it. Zangler flirts with Tess, the leader of the Follies. Tess says, I do not enjoy your company. I'm bored when I'm with you, and I do not find you even remotely attractive. And Zangler says, see, we could be married already. What a diss against straight people. I read Tess as either ace or lesbian. She and Zangler could totally be each other's beards. Just saying. Tess, like the rest of the town, is still determined to save the theater. Tess asks Zangler to invest in advertisements to promote the show. Zangler refuses. Tess storms off. Both Zangler and fake Zangler, Bobby, feel rejected. So they get drunk and do a whole comedy bit where they mirror each other. Then they pass out on the floor after a long duet. In the morning, Polly discovers the twin Zanglers. 
Polly and Bobby fight because duh. Bobby lied about being Zangler, but he also didn't lie. But like he did, so of course Polly's gonna have conflicting feelings. Meanwhile, the real Zangler has an identity crisis. Lank is tormented by the British tourists. Irene argues with him and the sexual tension is unbearable. She seduces Lank with a dominatrix dance routine. With a flop show and options looking rather limited, the town gathers to decide the fate of the theater. Polly and Bobby, you guessed it, argue. Bobby tries to rouse spirits. Instead, the British tourists barge in and sing. Polly gets heart eyes for Bobby by the end of the song. Despite the high energy, the town votes to can the show? Oh no! Bobby and Polly are devastated. Bobby goes back to New York. Out of love for Tess, Zangler pays for advertisements for the show. What kind of love? Could be romantic, could be platonic. You decide. But I have to wonder, why did Zangler put the money towards advertisements instead of towards the missed mortgage payments? I mean, like, it must have been Bobby's turn with their singular shared brain cell. Meanwhile, Polly is heartbroken. Which I don't get, because he pushed Bobby away. Bobby returns to New York for six weeks. His mom says, what's in your head? And Bobby says, dead rock. The mom says, I didn't ask what's in it. What's it thinking? The answer is nothing because Bobby is a dense himbo. And this time it was Zangler's turn with the brain cell? Or was it? Zangler stayed in Dead Rock and ran out of money. Now his New York theater is foreclosed. Bobby's mom gifts it to him as a birthday present. Once again, Bobby has a dissociative dance daydream. The chorus girls join him in singing Nice Work If You Can Get It. And he decides to go back to Dead Rock to be with Polly. In the original version, it's a straight-coded song, but in my interpretation, it's Bobby rejecting heteronormativity. Back at the ranch, Lank and Irene have transformed the Rundown Hotel into a five-star French restaurant. Uh, by the way, they're married now. Polly has been cast as the lead in the musical. He has a diva moment and won't go on stage. He has decided six weeks post-Bobby to acknowledge his feelings for Bobby. Thus, he needs to stop the show and go to New York right now to get his man. Because drama. Meanwhile, Bobby and his mom arrive in Dead Rock. But Polly's gone. He's actually not gone. The pickup truck ran out of gas on the way to the train station. So Polly arrives shortly after Bobby. Bobby and Polly meet in the center of town and dance in the most over-choreographed, campy dance anyone has ever seen in their whole lives. It's wonderful. It's overkill. This scene doesn't necessarily work in my interpretation because Polly, the woman's dress, is what makes the dance so good. <laughs> Lastly, if I haven't been able to change your mind about this, just consider one final thing. The name of the theater. Gaiety.